Hello everybody, I would like to start this presentation, introduce myself. My name is Fabio Fortes. I have 80 years of experience in the site assessment and remediation. I'm a professional engineer for the state of Florida, as well as Sao Paulo for Sao Paulo, Brazil. I have my bachelor's degree in environment engineer from the University, Federal University of Tajubá, Brazil, and my master's degree in civil engineering for the University of South Florida. I'm currently to work for HSW Consulting. And today I'm going to talk about how high resolution site characterization 3D modeling can improve your concept site model. But first, I'd like to ponder a question what makes a great concept site model? We know we need to get all the historical information about your site. We need to know where it's your on site contamination source or if you, we have some off site contribution. We need to know uh, all the elevation topography of the area. We need to know if this contamination, who is the receptor of this contamination, what's the risk for the ecological and human. Uh, define the geology and the hydrogeology, define your groundwater flow, where your contamination is going. You, have, you need to have a, a site map with a good resolution to see if you, everything that can help in the concept site model, utilities, building, tanks, and uh, also you need to delineate your plume, your groundwater plume. The last four items of this concept site model are different than others because they change over time. And why they change over time? Because we collect data over time. We have two main ways to collect data. One, discrete sampling. You go into the field, you grab the soil, groundwater, send it to the lab, and you have your results. This is punctual and precise analysis that you need to do. And also, you can apply advanced characterization tools that uh, RTRC that define three main types of these tools. One is the borehole surf, uh, surface geophysics. All the GPR, all the fields can use most uh, uh, in the civil engineering type of work. Remote sensing, that includes drones, uh, satellite image. Uh, we have a really good application and that you can combine with 3D modeling, but uh, I'm not going to talk about this, this presentation. And we have the direct and sensing probes that include the membrane that's most utilized in the market. It's the membrane inter interface probe, MIP, hydraulic profile 2, HPT. Normally, these two we can find a combining, uh, and it's, best, uh, it's the best results. And the laser inducing fluorescence, LIF. So I'm going to talk about this quickly. I don't have so much time. So for membrane interface probe, the MAI HPT, we, we can have this configuration, this normal configuration. We have the direct push, a dual probe, with your probe that uh, carry all the sensors. So we can see MIP, HPT, and the more in the bottle, the electric conductivity. Uh, sensor. I will talk quickly in the next slide. And all this uh, sensor, they are connected by cable to a trailer that we have uh, all the equipment that can read and uh, translate this for a, a computer screen. So you can see the logs in the real time. And uh, the good thing about all these advanced tools that you can have decisions in the, in the, in the field, you don't need to wait the lab response because you can see where it's your contamination, where is the type of the soil and the lithology. Um, so we need to keep in mind that in the MEI HPT, they have uh, three main types of information. One, it's about your geology. So the light conductive sensor that's in the bottle of the probe, they're going to give the response that you can estimate the type of the the soil, if it's sand, silt, clay. Normally, if you use cascade, at least uh, we have discharge. So, depend off your sensor. If you're high response, you it's a soil fine grains like clay, and this area here more sanded soils. Other type of information that uh, the most important it's about your contamin contaminants. 
So we have a different type of the sensor. You don't need to use necessarily all the types. You need, if you know what you're looking for, you can use a one, two, and the maximum three types of sensor, but include this LED capture detector, ECD, that's uh, most used for chlorinated compounds. We have the XSD, that is for uh, the hal halogenated compounds. PAD, that is used for all types of uh, VOC, that include petroleum and chlorinated solvents. And uh, FID, that's more for petroleum products. And uh, we have the, the charts over here. And uh, the last formation coming with uh, the HPT. That's uh, they, through the pressure of the water, they can give you the estimated hydraulic conductivity. So you know where it's your prefer preferential path in the, um, in the groundwater. And uh, normally we have the pressure. And the last column, it's your estimation flow. And they give this in feet per day. Laser induction fluorescent, LIF. We use this when we have petroleum nipple. The nipple and nipple, any product in the soil is the best tool for you delineate the product in the soil. So you can see they use a reaction with the, um, uh, <clears throat> we have the, 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 the optical response. So in this example, we have the crude oil and this in the soil. When do you turn on the UV lights? You can see different responses. And this, we have the chart that converts and you can find where is your light oil, what does it have oil, and have charts that you can, you can find where it's your product and which type of product. For this technology, we have different sensors in the market available in the market that uh, it's used more, you need to know what you're looking for, it's the best way. And the company that provides this type of service can indicate the best sensor to use. But now the question is, how to manage all this big data from concept site model big data? Imagine, you have all the direct sensor logs that I showed you before, that information, it's 0 0.2, 25 inches. Um, we have all the analytical data, all the information, uh, soil, groundwater to collect and send to the lab. We have the geology, hydrogeology information that, uh, or you collect from field notes or through the, 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 the MEI HPT. We have maps, we have area, we have uh, elevation using uh, topo maps. You need to bring all the information you put on the map with the, the key parameters and uh, all this data, all this analytical data change over time. How are we going to manage? How are we going to read all this data together? Using the 3D modeling. More specific, I will talk about this Earth Volumetric Studio. That's the most uh, friendly software, the most uh, Usable, I think you uh, uh, have in the market three or four different types of software, but so far EVS is the best. So it's uh, they collect all this big data. Normally we input this data in the Excel spreadsheets, and uh, you can put information for air, water, soil, and the lithology. And I will give um, uh, some examples here. Uh, this first case, um, it's a supplement, supplemental site assessment using uh, MI HPT. And uh, we use this in North here in Florida. So the historical, we have this uh, residential area. This uh, facility is a form of dry cleaner facility for a long time. The dump, the waste, and the back of the facility. So it's pretty hard, high, the PCE contamination area. But uh, we are in doubt about uh, the behavior of the, um, the plume. And we didn't have so much information about the uh, lithology, local lithology. So we decided to use um, 22 MEI HPT borns advanced in the area, divide the uh, um, 
little bit more in the area and divide more three uh, cross sections to understand. So if you go to 3D, this is responsible from the ECD uh, sensor. That's more, uh, we can uh, use more for chlorinated solvents. That's uh, what we are getting. Uh, together, we, we created these cross sections with the estimated uh, hydraulic conductivity that you get from the HPT sensor. And you see that the blue, uh, bluish, uh, white is the preferential pathway. And uh, we correlate a plume of EDC. And we can see now clear that uh, the plume start here in the shallow aquifer and uh, go down to intermediate and deep aquifer. So we are talking about uh, um, 1,000 feet down uh, gradient. We can see that uh, most of our contamination is going in the, in the one only point. So this is good that now we know how where we're going to target for an injection or a pump and treat. We still are working on remediation alternatives for the off-site plume, but we can see clear our contamination. So the next <clears throat> case study is the VOC ground plume time domain. There we go. So what's this site here? We have data between 2011 and 2020 and 2020. And uh, the VOC plume, we combine the different uh, contaminants and we just say uh, the contaminants that are above GCTL, above uh, 10 times GCTL, above 100 times GCTL, not specified by a number, but for the magnitude and when the, we press play, we can see the plume shrink over the time. What we, we did here, it's a SVE and the S part system in this area under the, the, the building. So between 2011 and 2018. So if you come back, we can see that it's large plume. In the red, it represents 100 times uh, the GCTL. And we can see in the shallow, the most of our, our, inject, our extract in the shallow intermediate. And they clean for below in this area here. Blue, it's below the GCTL. So all the plume. And uh, when the system turn off, uh, we have a little bit to uh, uh, build here rebound here in the shallow and this decrease we still have a plume a little in the deep area but some much less yes now we need to go and expand our SV system or other remedial treatments um, come back presentation um, so I want you to understand that EVS is not the only solution to try to put the many pieces of the puzzle together. We need to think about uh, all the softwares available and uh, use conform as need. So we know that uh, sometimes the GIS and 2D uh, figure is much more easy to understand than 3D perhaps. Uh, we can also, all the software, they talk in each other. So the input of the EVS, it's through the Excel spreadsheets. We can also export from EVS to a 3D PDF. We can export uh, um, some plumes in 2D and export for in the CAD or the GIS. So I need to keep in mind that uh, all the software talk together and they need to use everything to put, put your, make your puzzle. <laughs> the key takeaway of this presentation is high resolution site characterization 
and 3D modeling help to you understand the site conditions, help to you improve your concept of site model. Also, the remediation is much more cost effective. You can target really the core of your groundwater or soil contamination. And the most important, improve the communication.